I know, you don't see it, but guess what? There is actually a piece of acrylic in there. Hey guys, it's Sarah, and welcome to my studio. I have figured out how to combine 3D printing and acrylic. Now, this started out admittedly as a project on how to sort of create a stained glass effect using 3D printing to kind of create a shape and then perhaps put in pieces of acrylic to make a really cool design. And while I was looking up techniques, I found a video posted recently that shows that you can actually print directly onto a piece of acrylic in your 3D printer. And not only that, it's super sturdy. And I couldn't wait to try this. I made two designs. The first one, trialing, was just making a simple square shape with a witch design on both sides. So I printed the witch design initially, created a bit of a shape, dropped the acrylic in, and let it, let it finish printing by doing a top layer. And the top layer, is now secure to the acrylic. It's hard to see, I know, but I promise you, it's there. So then I took that same idea and opted to create sort of a Halloween decoration, sort of in the shape of an ornament again, because it was just an easy shape to play with and add a file available. And took that same design and printed it directly on a piece of black acrylic. And this, my friends, is sturdy. This is not coming off. I'm gonna show you guys how I did that by creating the files in 3D Shaper and then bringing them over into Bamboo Studio. So we're over here in Shaper 3D and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually import the shape of my large ornament. So this DX file actually exported out of Lightburn and so it has a lot of information on it, but ultimately at this point, all I really need is the single shape of the back of this ornament. That's what I'm gonna use for the base of my little witch ornament. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to just extrude a new shape to three millimeters because that is going to be the thickness of my acrylic that I'm using. One of the things that I do need to do is create sort of this holder for my acrylic. So I'm going to use that same sketch and I'm going to use the offset edge feature to create a two millimeter additional loop on the outside. And from there, I'm going to also extrude a three millimeter shape for this. And this is going to serve as sort of the holder for the acrylic inside the 3D. So these are the two shapes that I need for the initial couple of layers. I'm also going to take a moment and just kind of straighten the angle on this. In my CO2 laser, I have them set at an angle because it just enables the pieces to be a little closer together and I'm not wasting as much acrylic. But here in Shaper, I want things to be straight and easy to use, so I'm just going to fix that really quick. Once I've got things positioned, I now need to take a moment, clean up my files. That way I know which object is which, and these names will transfer over to my Bamboo Studio, so it lets me know that which one is the holder and which one is the ornament. So now I'm going to import the witch design that I created for my stained glass piece. So I'm gonna import the same design that I did and actually created this over in Affinity Designer using a design that I found online. I think I found it on Creative Fabrica, but I took it and made some additional adjustments. So what I need to do is actually set this up so that it is about a one millimeter thickness. I may go in and change this, but this is gonna be on top of the piece of acrylic. So to make it easier to see, I'm also going to change the color over to white. That way, when I put it on top of the gray acrylic, I can see it a little better. There we go. So now I need to scale it down to the size of my ornament. And the one downside about everything that gets imported into 3D Shaper is that it always comes in really, really big. So I usually end up having to scale things down to get them to fit. Once everything is scaled down, I'm just going to take a moment, make sure it's positioned exactly where I want. Just adjusting things here and there. There we go. And then I'm also going to bring this up so that it's sitting right on top of the acrylic. Now, the only thing I need to do is basically trim off the area of this design that I don't need. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a projection of the ornament. And I do that by basically selecting the item and under the sketch function and using the project and have it project basically to the flat plane that I'm using as the sketch plane. 
what it's going to do is it's going to project that shape and create a new sketch. Once I have that sketch projected onto my surface, I can then go in and select it. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort of extrude it through the shape of the witch so that it will cut off all of that excess area. Now, typically when you use the extrude function in Shaper, it's going to want to cut off that section in the middle. But if you tap the button just under the numbers there, you can actually change it to intersect and that will actually leave the section in the middle. There we go. So this is all the design of the witch now perfectly cut so that all of that fits on top of the acrylic. Now it looks pretty good. There's a couple of little areas though that I'm not completely happy with. I feel like there are extra little pieces that aren't really necessary. And so I'll just kind of go through and try and clean things up so that it's all sort of, you know, one connected piece. That's a little better. But I still have a couple of areas that I want to fix. And so in order to do that, I'm going to actually project the sketch of the witch also onto my sketch plane. And doing that because it's so complicated makes it look really kind of messy. So try and follow me here. But basically, I'm zooming into the area where I want to do some trimming. And I'm just taking and creating new lines at intersection points. And this was a little hard on Shaper in terms of trying to process where I want things to go. And truth be told, I cut out a lot of thinking time for my iPad, but it did eventually do what I wanted it to do. And that was connect some lines at the top. And then I did a similar trim on the bottom where this looks, where there's this little extra area that I just need to basically cut off. And I do that in part because once I cut these areas off in the sketch, I can do that same extrusion trick where I can pull up the pieces essentially cut off. So once that's done, I'm fairly happy with the design at this point. I think it looks pretty good. And I think I am ready to export this and send it over to Bamboo. I will make one final adjustment before I send it over, and that is to reduce the thickness of the witch layer to 0.6 millimeters. I feel like one is probably too much. I also feel like I need a little extra detail on her. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little cute little boo, if you will, to the inside of the witch. And I'll do that by adding text to the sketch, getting it sized correctly, and then moved into place. And then once I have it in place, all I really need to do is extrude it back through the layer of the witch, like I did with the other adjustments I did on the sides. I like this outcome. I think it'll look really good. And I think it'll print pretty well. So I'm going to send it over to Bamboo Printer. I'm just going to export this in typical 3MF format. I'm going to take it over to my slicer. So once I'm over in Bamboo Studio, I'm going to import the file and when I bring it in I do notice that there are a couple of pieces that appear to sized correctly and that happens from time to time when I move files from Shaper to Bamboo. I never entirely know why it happens but it's usually a fairly easy fix since I know how thick they're supposed to be so I can do that and they will scale down and be exactly where I need them to be so it's a quick fix nothing too major. Before I set this up to slice, what I need to do is I need to take out the portion that is marked as the ornament because that's going to be an acrylic. I usually double check, make sure that it is the correct size that I need. I know that my acrylic ornament is five and a half. Once I've verified that, all I have to do is click on that item on my plate and press delete. And now all I have left are the pieces that are going to get printed on top of the acrylic as well as the little frame for the acrylic. So I'm going to switch up my material. I'm going to print the witch in sort of a gray PLA silk. I think that'll look pretty. I'm also going to print the holder in the same PLA silk because it doesn't really matter what material I use. And this will just prevent having to change material and extra purging. I'm also going to double check my settings and make sure I have them 
set correctly. I'm going to use um, these settings that I actually got from a model that seemed to prep pretty well. Run it through the slicer, make sure there aren't any errors. It does look like those blue letters aren't quite the right height and I will need to go back and fix that. But before I do, I'm going to the three millimeter mark. I'm going to tell the printer to pause before it continues. And you do that by right clicking on the layer that you want the pause to be at over on the sidebar. What that does is that just pauses the printer, gives me time to put the acrylic in, and then I can hit restart when I'm ready. One other final thing I'm going to do is I know that there is not much surface area on this acrylic holder, and it really could benefit from some additional surface area on the plate. So what I'm going to do is just add a simple brim to the outside of my little holder, and that will be sufficient to keep it in place. So now that everything's set up, let's take this over to the printer and get this printed. So there you have it. That's how you create a really simple design that you can print onto a piece of 3D acrylic. Probably wondering what exactly would you do with this? I mean, what is the purpose of doing this? I mean, you could still cut the exact same shape with a piece of acrylic. It might even be simpler and then just, you know, combine the two together. Well, there are some uses for this technique that you might not necessarily think of. The number one thing that comes to mind is the fact that no matter what you do, you can't really get transparent PLA or even PETG to look completely transparent. It never is going to look like glass. It's just unfortunately a limitation. But with this technique, it enables us to create prints that need an area of clear and then being able to combine them into a complete print so that you get that area that you need clear. It also enables you to sort of combine techniques. Again, I'm thinking about, you know, how I might be able to create stained glass frames and then be able to just cut pieces of translucent acrylic and put them in the shapes and then seal the shape and it'll be sturdy and create kind of a unique design. The other possibility that I found is the fact that this creates a really sturdy bond. Like the acrylic will typically break before the PLA will come off of the acrylic is what I saw in the video that I was looking at, which means if you're wanting to create handles or some additional attachment onto the acrylic, this becomes a possibility. The other possibility that comes to mind with this is the fact that with 3D printing, you can actually get a waterproof seal. It turns out when you're bonding to acrylic, you can also get a waterproof seal with that. And that really opens up a window for doing some really cool things, such as, I don't know, ornaments. That's right. That shaker technique I taught you guys a few weeks ago, you can actually create waterproof seals to put mineral oil inside between the pieces of acrylic and it will be waterproof. This can be done both inside the machine or by creating a small channel. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that in my next video. So if you want to find out more, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll catch you in a couple weeks. Bye!